Oh, come on, Nora. What is there to think about? You do want your son back, right? I'm sure none of your private investigators have been of any help. Nora was being blackmailed by her father, Henry. He wanted the pharmaceutical company Nora's mother had left for her. However, she was unaware that her son was standing right next to her. Pete had switched places with Cherry again. Mom, please don't listen to them. Stop making a fuss, Cherry. If we can find your brother, I'm willing to give up everything I have, even the company. Then here, sign this transfer of ownership papers right away. Fearing his mom was making a big mistake, Pete did the first thing that came to his mind. Just as Nora was about to sign the papers, Pete nudged the table, and the jug of water on it fell, drenching the whole document. Why, you little weasel! Look at what you have done! Ugh, I'm going to kill you! Angela, if you lay a hand on my daughter, I will chop it off! Have you forgotten the thrashing I gave you last time? How dare you threaten me! Correct your daughter! She is the one who ruined the document! Now, now, this is not a place to argue. Uh, but, Mom! Shh, Angie, we can print another document which Nora will sign, won't you, Nora? And while she signs, I will hold on to Naughty Cherry. I... I can't do this here. I need to go back to the hotel. The hell you are! Don't go back on your words, Nora. I guess your son isn't a priority to you. I'm not as vain as you, Dad. I will leave Cherry at the hotel and come to the house. You can have the document prepared in the meantime. Nora and Pete said their byes to the Black family and left the place. Henry wasn't convinced by Nora's words, so he instructed Angela to follow Nora and bring her back to the house. Meanwhile, at the hunt suite, Cherry received a message from Pete. Cherry, are you there? I need a favor. It's urgent. What is it, Pete? Send an email from Dad's laptop to Mom. This is the message. On the car ride back, Pete instructed Cherry to do as he told her to prevent his mom from giving the company. In a matter of minutes, Nora received an anonymous email which read, I know where your son is. Don't sign the agreement. What? Who is this from? A panicked Nora tapped on her phone and tried to find out the source of the email, but in vain. The sender's account was protected by a firewall. However, the small message cleared the clouds in Nora's judgment. This message has come from such a secure source. It must be legit. But why do Dad and Angela want my company so badly? Is there something I don't know? I need to get to the bottom of this. Good thing Cherry prevented me from signing it. Nora soon reached the hotel and headed straight to the restaurant with Pete. However, they were suddenly stopped by Angela. Where do you think you are going? You have to sign the agreement. How could you go lunching at a time like this? Don't you want your son anymore? Leave your daughter here and come back home with me right now. You must think I'm stupid. I know you're all hiding something. I'm not falling for your threats. I'm not signing anything until I know for sure that you have my son. Ugh, Nora, how can you go back on your word? You want me to give you the company? I will, but before that, tell dad to bring me my son first. Could someone call a doctor? My husband's collapsed! Cherry, sweetie, could you go to the room by yourself? I will have to take care of this. Pete obliged and ran to the elevator. On his way, he texted Cherry to come to the stairwell. Meanwhile, at the hunt suite, Justin had just returned to his room after a long meeting. He went to Pete's room to check in on him and was startled to see what his son was doing. Oh, hi, Daddy. Thank you so much for my Barbie doll. Um, you are welcome. I thought you didn't like it. What? Are you crazy? Look at how pretty she is. Yeah, she's lovely. Just yesterday, he told me he didn't like dolls. This boy is going to drive me crazy one day. Justin's thoughts were interrupted by Lawrence. Sir, something's happened. What is it, Lawrence? Someone has collapsed in the lobby and is apparently not breathing. The receptionist is saying that there is utter chaos downstairs. Oh, God, this can't be happening now. Come on, let's go. Justin and Lawrence hurried out of the suite, and Cherry went back to her Barbie world, failing to notice Pete's text. After some time, her phone started blaring with multiple texts from Pete. Cherry, are you there? Come to the stairwell, Cherry. I'm waiting for you. Cherry! The constant beeping brought Cherry back to reality, and she rushed to the stairwell after reading Pete's messages. What were you doing? I sent you so many texts. Sorry, Pete. I was playing. Cherry, you need to be more attentive. 
We are walking on a tightrope here. I'll be more careful. What's the matter now? Tell me. Is Dad back from work? Yes, he came back, but went back down with Lawrence. There is some emergency in the lobby. Great, that gives me enough time to erase the traces of the email you sent earlier. We can't let Dad find out about it. Come on, Cherry, let's switch back. All right. Cherry and Pete switched their places again. Back in the lobby, a crowd had surrounded the middle-aged man who had fallen unconscious. Nora and Angela went closer to inspect. A woman who seemed like his wife was crouching next to him crying. Oh my god, honey! Wake up! Wake up! Whoa, they look rich. I will be rewarded if I save them. Get away, everybody! I'm a medical student. He needs CPR. Angela started giving CPR to the man, but it wasn't working. So Nora decided to step in. Angela, step aside. I think he has tension pneumothorax. Shut up, Nora. This is not the time for you to play savior. You are not the doctor. I am. A student. You are still a student. So move away. Clearly the chest compressions are not working. Let me help. Angela ignored Nora. However, Nora, gauging the situation, swiftly went to the reception and brought a needle. She dragged Angela away from the man and got to work. Nora, what the hell are you doing? He has tension pneumothorax. His chest needs to be decompressed. As if you know how to do that. Nora, step back. Angela's words made the man's wife anxious and her sobs increased. Why? Why do you have to use that big needle? You can't do this if you're not a doctor. Ma'am, I know what I am doing. Please calm down. Also, someone please dial 911. This man needs to get to the hospital stat. Regardless of the tension in the air, Nora remained calm. She sterilized the needle and inserted it into the man's chest. At the sight of some blood gushing out, Angela screamed. Murder! Murder! Angela's shouting caused unrest in the surrounding crowd. They raised their voice against Nora. Will Nora be able to convince them without revealing that she is a surgeon? Does the man survive? Does Justin intervene? Don't let your excitement die! The full audio series is on the Pocket FM app. Tap the link in the description to install now.